Hi everybody and welcome to today's video, Uninhabitable Property, how it could save you thousands on stamp duty. The big question is why? Well, of course, if you don't have an inhabitable property, then you don't pay the residential rate of up to 12%, you don't pay the additional surcharge of three, and if you're a non-resident, you don't pay the 2% non-resident surcharge. So a total potential rate of 17%, but an uninhabitable property only pays the non-residential rate of 5%. So it could be saving you up to 12% of the value of the property in tax that you shouldn't pay or shouldn't have paid. So the big question is, what is an uninhabitable property, or in other words, not suitable for use as a dwelling? Well, there are a couple of statutory guidelines which are not in the Taxes Act, namely the Housing Act 1957 and the Fitness for Human Habitation Act 2018. And either of these are a really good guideline to whether or not a property is suitable for use as a dwelling. But let's break it down into its component and elements. I'll first say, go and have a look at HMRC's guidance on this, and think about the property you're buying or have bought, because it's a, what they describe as a multifactorial consideration. In other words, there's no single factor that may or may not render a property uninhabitable and therefore unsuitable for use, but rather a number of factors. So let's work through what those factors are. First and foremost, the question to ask is, can I live in the property in the state it's in? And that will consist of looking at whether you have utilities. So if you do not have gas, water, electric or sewage, and they're not capable of being easily repaired, then your property is almost certainly uninhabitable. The second thing to think about is lack of the basic means of living in the property. For this, you need an ability to cook and eat food. You need a toilet, naturally. You need a bath or other washing facilities. And if your property lacks these features, and again, they cannot be easily repaired or quickly replaced, then you're living in a property or you're not living in a property that is suitable for use as a dwelling. More seriously, there are properties that are dangerous. When you buy a property, it may be in an unmortgageable condition for a variety of reasons. It may have serious structural defects that mean you simply are in danger of having the roof or indeed the upper floors falling on your heads and you cannot live in it and it's got to have major work done on it before you can occupy it. Revenue guidance says that it, if defects are capable of being fixed in a relatively short time, then that doesn't render it unsuitable for use. But the question is, what is a relatively short time? 30 days? 60 days? We've seen properties that have taken six months or more to put back into habitable condition, and we would definitely argue that these are unsuitable for use as a dwelling. The next thing to watch out for with a property, and this will almost certainly be disclosed by a survey or an engineer's report, is what are called serious health risks, not least of which radioactivity. Radioactive uh, seepage from the ground in this country, and especially in areas of high granite minerality, is, is, is a serious concern, what's known as radon contamination. But there may be other forms of contamination in the property, mould, fungus, chemicals, any number of things. And if you have been recommended not to move into a property until all of those issues have been fixed, that makes it uninhabitable. And the last one, of course, is taking all of those things wrapped into a bundle, what we describe as a serious state of dilapidation, more than merely just cosmetic repair. If a property has weak floors, so meaning you cannot use rooms of either the room that the floor is in or the room underneath it, if it has completely rotten timbers, rotting floorboards, etc., which requires you to strip the property back to the shell, sometimes called a total strip out, and completely rebuild it internally before you can occupy it, then you're all, again, almost certainly buying a property that is not residential for SDLT purposes and you should only pay 5%. Now, if you're at all unsure that the property you are buying or have bought meets a sum or all of this criteria, meets the threshold, then please do get in touch with us. Links are in the description below. More than happy to look at all the documentation, photographs, and indeed conduct a site visit if you want. Make a final decision as to what the right rate of SDLT is for your property. Now, 
That's a brief run through of what is actually a very long and voluminous subject, but hopefully it's given you some ideas as to the things you need to look for. And if you've liked this video, please click like, please click subscribe so you get further updates on this and other topics in stamp duty and in property generally. And uh, if you've got any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments below. I've been David Hanna for Cornerstone Tax SDLT Refunds. Thanks for listening.